Well, I'd love to take this opportunity to introduce our guest speaker for today. So we'll move moving on into our talk. Kevin Moran, a Toronto-based designer, illustrator, and all-around good guy, according to his mom. I think you'll all agree. <laughs> Kevin works both full-time for ad agencies and startups while also working with some notable brands like Spotify, Nike, Uber Eats. He calls this a side hustle. During his 10 years in the biz, he's had the opportunity to work with a number of clients all around the country and even the world, and has even had some work published in some real life magazines. His illustration brand, Smelly Trees, pushed the boundaries of illustration with style consisting of geometrically sound visuals paired with fun colors and quirky graphics that are hard to forget. When he's illustrating for clients, when he isn't illustrating for clients, I should say, he teaches a few design classes at two local Toronto colleges. He also has delved into the world of online courses, creating his own during the midst of the pandemic. And I think we'll have a chance to share that link out with all of you after. His colorful, bold illustration style matches his bubbly, I would call effervescent personality and his passion for pushing the boundaries of graphic design. We'd love to give Kevin the stage here, give him a warm welcome in the chat, and uh, we can't wait to hear what Kevin has to say from his words, um, uh, from his words to yours, we know there'll be some inspiring things to share. Thanks, Kevin. Stage is yours. Hi, everybody. Uh, thank you so much for that, that intro, Carla. It was amazing. I'm so excited to be here. Let me go ahead and share screen here because it is a prop of mine for, uh, for this talk this morning. You're gonna see uh you're gonna see a horse farting right now. And I'm gonna go ahead and play. So um yeah, thank thank you again for that that awesome intro. I'm very excited to be here to talk with you all and, and share everything that is creative um in terms of what it means to me and and what it means to all of you, I'm sure. And um I'd be lying to you if I told you I wasn't a little bit nervous this morning because when the group uh, did invite me to come speak, uh, they they told me that there was a theme, and we just talked about the theme. It's it's folklore, and it uh, some of the, the the ways that it was explained right now was was amazing, and it, it fully kind of I'm starting to understand it a little bit more. But um, initially, I didn't know <laughs> well, how I was going to relate anything that I have and what I create every single day, and how I'm going to relate that back to folklore. Um, so naturally, the first thing I, I thought of uh, was was just taking in uh, some some T Swift, and I uh, I learned nothing to tell you the truth. I had no idea uh, what she was talking about. It was fantastic. I heard some bangers, and it was it was pretty good. But I really didn't learn anything about folklore. So um, uh, Taylor let me down there, but that's okay. All right. I kept going and I went on to the Google machine. I said, well, what does Google tell me that, that folklore is? And uh, I got this amazing definition. And I think that a lot of people have already spoke to that when they were speaking uh, just now. And, and Carla did explain this as well. The tradition, the traditional beliefs and customs of community passed through the generations by word of mouth. And um, I thought that this is pretty impactful thing. And I think that as creators, we all have our own beliefs and experiences, and we like to share them with, with other people as they are kind of coming up within the industry. And I thought it was a great chance for me to share my beliefs in my experience, um, and I guess share some folklore myself. And what I'd like to share is do work to get work you want. And I know there's my copywriting friends that are on this call, I'm sure they're they were all rolling their eyes really, really hard and throwing it up in their mouths right now. Just seeing this is probably a nightmare. I'm not a writer, uh, but I feel like this kind of stuff isn't really talked about in school enough and, um, and how it, it kind of does help you develop your craft and helps you grow within a field that you do love. So uh, I'd like to share my journey uh, with you and how I, I've kind of grown in the creative field and uh, how this kind of... Uh, like doing the work that I want to do got me the work that I wanted. Um, so I'd like to share my journey with you right now. Um, so yeah, I'm a graphic designer. 
uh, by trade. That's because I studied that in school. Uh, it's not a title because it changes over time as I experience new things. And ultimately, when I meet a new person and they ask me what I do, I say, I'm a graphic designer. And the conversation ends there. I don't want to go any farther anyway, because I really, I, I find it really tough to talk about what I do, um, especially with people who are outside the creative field, um, because they don't often, often understand how tough it is uh, to work in this practice and to be considered good at what you do, or at least respectable. Um, so I'm a graphic designer and I like to keep it that way, but, uh, it wasn't always like that. So I did go to school for, for graphic design. And while I was in school, I had this, um, professional practice course where they talk about networking interviews, resume building. This is a real live, not reliable footage, but this is footage from that class where they actually had me, uh, interviewed, uh, and recorded. I held on to it because um, I, and even though I'm really getting sweaty just looking at it, and that I mean, I think I'm, I have a full hawk there. Um, but they basically give you direction on where to go in the creative industry, and and they ask you what you want to do. And and when they asked me what I wanted to do, I told them I wanted to be an, in illustration. I wanted to be an illustrator, but I also wanted to work within a creative team. And back then, this is unheard of, so the, the response was really really quick and immediate. Uh, they told me you won't work in a studio as an illustrator. And I'm sure that, that they were just being realistic. They weren't looking to shatter my dreams or anything. They're just saying, you, you, that's, that's not how this works. You, you, you have to do graphic design stuff and that's going to really kind of help you do other things. So um, I, I just took it and I said, okay, that's, that's fine. I'll, I'll just keep trucking along with, with all my graphic design stuff and I'll see what's going on. Right. At the time I was in, uh, in the service industry, I was bartending and serving on the side while going to school. And uh, I spent all of my nights in this bar and it was just, uh, it was eating away at my soul. I, I really loved it, but at the same time, I was just, I was getting drained because I was going to school during the day. I was going to, um, to the bar every night and it wasn't how I thought reality was. I thought you'd just go and hang out in a building between the hours of nine to five o'clock and that would be your day. And then the rest of the day would be, your, be to you and you could do whatever you want. Um, spoiler alert, that's not how it ended, but I'll, I'll take you through that in a bit. Um, so I took the very first job that was offered to me right out of school. I, as soon as somebody offered me something, they're like, I'd like you to take this job. I took it. Didn't care what the price was. I didn't care what I was getting paid. I just took it. Uh, and it wasn't too far from home. It was a job out in Thornhill. I'm not sure if there's any Thornhill promenade goers out there. Um, I'm going to get sidetracked for a bit to talk about what Thornhill is. Um, it's what is Thornhill? I don't even quite know if anybody else is from Thornhill. It's a very weird thing because um, it, it said Thornhill on your mail, but um, it was you were basically all you would see is Vaughn signs and Markham signs. All your friends were from Richmond Hill and all your friends were from North York and everything was in Toronto. Very, very weird place. But uh, anyway, getting back to it, um, I was working in Thornhill at the time. And uh, I was really, really pumped about it. My parents were happy. I got a job in my field. They thought I was super successful. And um, the realities really did sink into my first day. Uh, this is the building that I was working in at the time. It's this red building oozing with creativity and potential. And uh, I, I was fooled. I was bamboozled. It was, it was kind of a weird situation because I, I met with uh, with the person at coffee shops, I never really even thought about it. I was so young, I didn't really think about going to the place that I was going to be going for the first day and checking it out. Um, I just went really early and I'm like, oh shoot, this is where I'm working. And I sat in a small room with four other group graphic designers all day, just assessing artwork for very various printing methods um, to ensure they were actually doable. And uh, my, my title was graphic artist. Um, and I should have known, because that's a very, very odd title rookie mistake on my end for not reading the contract for the title of the gig. So I kind of shipped the bed there. Um, didn't even have designer in it, but um, I didn't do much design anyway when I was there. So it, it's not a lie. Uh, it was very tedious work, no room for error. Um, and, and if you messed up, you messed up and, and it would often fall on the art department as, as their fault. So they would go and look for who did the thing. Um, but I went to work every day, took care of my work and, and I just kept going with it. I was just like, well, let me just go in, get paid and, 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 and learn along the way. And I did learn a whole bunch actually from this place. I learned how to do some screen printing. I bought my own screen printing set. I bought all this equipment, spent thousands of dollars. Uh, cause again, I was very young and, and I was stupid. Um, but I, I did learn a whole bunch of stuff about the commercial printing stuff. I bought my own commercial printing set. I set it up in my parents' garage and I started doing some, 
some some cool stuff. And actually, and that's the, that red table that you're seeing there on the right there. I'd like to give a quick shout out to Zellers. Yeah, Zellers. I, I bought that when they they had shut down and they were getting rid of everything and they were selling everything, not only all their inventory, but they were selling all of their tables as well. So I was able to get that that sweet table for I think about twenty dollars. So um, shout out to uh, Zellers. Not only do they have a dope ass logo and and, and cheap undershirts, but um, they also uh, kickstarted my creative career. So anyways, um, I was making some really, really cool stuff when I was doing my screen printing. And um, I mean, it helped me kind of develop a bit of a style. I was printing t-shirts, posters. Um, I was using these very chunky lines uh, and it was helping me at least do something uh, that I wasn't able to get for my full-time job. So let's get back to my harsh reality. Uh, my miserable existence at this building uh, continued. And I, I actually, I was living within these four walls for a very long time. And um, it was, it was kind of, it was eaten away at me. I was, I would continue to work at nighttime, trying to do my screen printing stuff and just doing any kind of illustration work or design work that I came across. Um, and then I'd go to this building during the day and it was, it was getting to a point where um, they were even asking us to do overtime and, and you feel like an asshole for not doing the overtime because you'd be just leaving at five o'clock and then everybody else would be just hanging out in that room still. So you have to do it. Um, and I was just basically putting in more hours and, and not really getting or building upon any marketable creative experience that I had um, alongside actually with that as well. I was very, very clumsy. I was very accident prone. I was really, really into sports, but I sucked. Obviously judging by these pictures, I, I kept breaking bones um, and I was injured myself all the time. And it, it was, I was also getting a lot of weird uh, things happen to me. Like I, I was constantly bumping into like poison ivy and I would get like this weird kind of flare up on my arms. And, and, and I sometimes got on my face, I had shingles at a very young age um, and I wasn't able to work, but my employer was, was really cool with it. Um, probably because they could have replaced me with anybody. Uh, but uh, I, I frankly think they should have fired me because I missed a total of three months um, of work that I should have been there. So uh, totally like I, I was very, very grateful that they, they kept me on because um, I, I did have a chance to still get like go in and get paid. They didn't pay me when I was off. But when I went back, I, I still had a job to go to to earn some money. Um, and I was able to, to still build upon my craft. And obviously, we know as, as a graphic designer, um, uh, this stuff is expensive, right? So, uh, and, and speaking of expensive, I had this computer, right? My best friend at the time, pew, 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 pew. It was, I spent my days and nights on this thing, especially when I broke all my bones, just be in bed, uh, trying to mend up. And I just watched tutorials and, and just um, used Adobe Illustrator and Adobe programs. Um, and at that time, when I was really, really getting into it and, and starting to, to build on my work uh, with my, my printing stuff, Dribble hit the scene. And um, it allowed me to kind of build up a, like a miniature portfolio just to share things. And if you don't know what Dribble is, Dribble is just basically very small shots of, of things that you're working on at that time. And it, it was a bit like a networking device as well. So you would be able to, to go on there, share with people, comment on work, and then also just engage with other people and, and take that conversation over Twitter and email and stuff like that. And it had a higher button that would allow me to get a few side jobs as well as I was kind of pushing through. And I continued to build out my style and I was able to, to do my thing and um, share my work with the world. And I, I just kept doing stuff that had nothing to do with anything. I would just make icons. I was kind of cornering the, the icon market at the time, but I was also trying to make them into larger illustrations. And as I was doing this, I built up a bit of portfolio and I was able to escape the, the red building, the dreaded red building. And I became a graphic designer. I was working within a team. I was obsessing over process and I was able to uh, just pick, pick people's brains to get things and steal a bit from their process and kind of start developing my own process. Um, I, I'd done a few jobs there and then I eventually, my wife and I, well, my girlfriend at the time, we relocated to the city. Um, this is what the skyline looked like. I don't think it looks like this anymore, especially from the gardener. Um, but, uh, yeah, we moved to the city. My wife was also, um, working in the city at the time. So we wanted to be closer to work. Plus it did give me access to, uh, to, to other networking events from companies like Shopify, WeWork. They're always putting together all of these big events at their new studio and inviting everyone to come. So um, 
it allowed me to go and meet more creative people. And, um, and also, I mean, it was really, really expensive. <laughs> I was doing my, my graphic design work uh, at nighttime. And then I was just picking up any kind of dribble jobs that did come in. And, and I was doing blog posts and any kind of icons for any startups that were, that were in Toronto. Um, but I continued to just keep pushing and, and doing work on the side to see what, how I can make more of my somewhat illustrated career. Uh, two years passed and nothing was happening. I did some quick jobs here and there, but it was kind of, uh, it's getting kind of stale. Nothing was really happening. I was doing a whole bunch of blog images for people and I wasn't really building upon any kind of creative stuff or, or doing any illustrations that I could be super duper proud of. Um, so uh, I eventually got into a postcard game through a friend. He was telling me to say, he's like, send all these postcards, man. Just, I have a list of art directors and he gave me all this, all these contacts. I started just harassing people. I also used to hang outside advertisers office and I would, I would like follow them to the subway and I tell them about my work and stuff like that, but I wasn't really getting any work. And then eventually I got the email. I got a job from Cincinnati magazine. They asked me to do a whole bunch of spot illustrations for them. And they were going to be paying me $500 USD. Um, and they would give me 27 days to do the job. And I was pumped. I was ecstatic. I was like, this is amazing. I've, I've made it. I made it. And I made these little spot illustrations. Um, and they were just basically, it was for their education, their annual education series. And uh, I would just basically, uh, I, I designed these icons just for the copy blocks to cover the types of emerging programs in the educational space. Um, and uh, they were really, really small. But I mean, I was seeing my work in print and, and I, was, I was ecstatic. Uh, and then from there, I started realizing the dynamic of, sharing your work online and how that kind of just blows up into this thing. I'd share my work on Dribbble, but then it'd go to all of these other networks where people can see your work. And I would get into this whole thing where I'm like, where did you, when I get a job and say, where did you, where did you see my work? And they tell me a different website every time. So um, I continued to share my work and then things really, really started kind of coming at me and I was getting legitimate jobs. I did some work for Huffington Post, uh, did some stuff for um, Metrolinks and TTC to unveil their Presto, their Presto card uh, campaign. Um, basically getting people to understand a little bit more about how Presto works. I mean, how to hold in your hands. Now I was joking. This is just more, more illustrations from the campaign itself. And it was hard to avoid these illustrations actually at the time. They were on the TTC platforms. There was Shoppers Drug Mart. Um, you couldn't escape them. They were even at TT, uh, TFC games. And um, we got to work on a lot of fun stuff as well with the copywriters there. But um, eventually I, I came across this, this, this tweet um, about the ads where um, Park Life, sorry, Parkdale Life tweeted, these Presto ads are next level cringe. And then your friendly neighbor replied, my grandparents were in town earlier this week and they tore into this ad because of how cringy they found it. And at first I was a little bit hurt but uh, then it, it kind of did sink in a little bit. I, I had made it. Uh, I was a professional drawing guy at the time. So I really, it, it kind of boosted my confidence when that, that person had shit on my work. And I started making just crazier things. Like how, how I started making a little bit more collage type, type work. Um, nothing that, that really had to do with anything. I would just draw all of these just larger image overlapping. And I, I didn't even put too much effort into it. when I posted it, I would put the comment would be whatever was in the image. And um, I would continue to, to kind of do that and work during the day at my, my full-time job. And um, I, I eventually moved uh, to a few different positions in the graphic design field. And uh, eventually I started working on an advertising agency. A creative director of mine had recommended me for a job um, that I, a creative director I previously worked with brought me in and um, brought me, allowed me to be an art director there. And this gave me a little bit more exposure to larger clients. And I was working alongside some very talented uh, art directors and, and amazing storytellers that really helped me mold a bit more my process. I would bug them constantly um, and uh, because I sucked compared to them. And I would always be like, hey, boy, let, me, let me steal some ideas from you. And then I, I can help you with illustrative pursuits, perhaps. I don't know. Because um, I wasn't getting paid. If you, if, you do the, if you do any illustration work while you're working at the advertising agency, you can't just bill them. You would just do it as a bit of a favor, especially um, at, at any point where you were pitching ideas to clients. Um, but it did give me exposure to larger clients and I, I got to do a lot better work. And uh, I even got to, to, to do some pitches for Nike. Um, 
these are going to go in bottles for their, their running series that was happening. They hated it. Uh, but then they remembered me for their Nike Air Max day that was coming up and they were unveiling their new uh, Nike Air Max 270s, I believe, the new colorway. Uh, and then they, they had me illustrate it and, and put it on a hat as a giveaway piece. I also got to do a lot of great um, logo work as well, um, where I got to work for a Canadian health food brand um, and create their logo as well. I also got a chance to work with Molson and, and create some, some visuals for Belgium Moon. So uh, I guess you could say, I mean, going back to the beginning of the story, uh, I, I did work as uh, worked in a studio as an illustrator. I was able to get that. And I, I was still kind of working away at this stuff and, and kind of doing illustration day and night now, uh, plus doing some art direction as well and, and kind of exposing myself to other areas of the industry and tech startups and, and also just uh, building presentations and things like that and kind of really helped me mold in my process. And I got better at what I did, I better at tighter di deadlines, um, any, any kind of conceptual work and, and kind of exploring what the possibilities were and matching the vision of art directors and creative directors as they shared ideas with me. Um, and then the clients, again, they kept, they kept coming and I was happy to do more and more work. Uh, a friend of mine, um, Seth Witten, my, my internet friend, he was working uh, with Spotify at the time. And he's like, yo, can you help us make uh, a Christmas card or a holiday card? I'm like, for sure. And I got a chance to play around with their little um, internal kind of monsters that they, they use for some communication pieces. And when I did that, that led me to also help them with their um, customer advisory event where I got to take my collage kind of style and brand that event. And that went into a lot of name badges, as well as some, some takeaway buttons say that they have an opinion, they participated in the event. Um, I even got a job working with the Strumbellas to, to help them with their single salvation, which was, uh, which was an honor. Uh, they also, they loved the single so much and I did some posters for them. They even had me design their word mark for their 2019 tour, which was super awesome. Uh, I had a chance to work with, uh, with Fast Company as well. And um, I was basically, I was oozing. I, I got a lot of great work under my belt. And as I was sharing more work and more, I guess, higher level clients, more jobs would come at me. And that's, again, when I it solidified it, I made it. I was a professional drawing guy. I'd done it. Now, I, I won't say that it's it's amazing every single time. Like there are there are ups and downs to to the every day that I was doing this, but I continued to to work on my practice. If I did have some spare time, I would always continue to do work and, and share it uh, with with my my network and share it with the with the community. So whether it was me drawing my stuff that I was going outside with that day. Uh, whether it was the coffee cups that were piling up on my desk during the pandemic, some smelly uh, 420s that I had to show, I had to throw out because we we're doing some spring cleaning, um, cat drinking and smoking or a head full of shit, um, or even just something super duper trippy. I was sharing work that I loved to do. Um, and that brings me full circle to everything that I was trying to share and a little bit um, of folklore that I want to share with you. <laughs> and uh, if I could kind of sum this up with, with four key takeaways, um, I, would just, I would say in order to, to kind of succeed at this kind of stuff, I would say do work, share it. Uh, I don't think your work exists until it's on the internet. It's a very weird thing, but I think it's very true that you, what you're doing doesn't, doesn't matter unless it's on the internet. Um, find people like you, whether it's super specific to what you're doing, um, or if it's just a creative person that you can kind of bounce ideas off and share some really, really cool thoughts with. Um, anybody who understands your thing, um, definitely um, find your people. Um, use your time wisely. Time's a weird thing, especially during a pandemic. It'll, it'll go by really, really quick. And um, I know that we all love crushing the latest series like Bad Vegan or whatever the, the new thing is. Someone getting swindled out of their money. Um, it's... There's a, a lot of waste of time there. So if you can take your, your computer with you and kind of watch, watch that content, maybe, maybe that's a better use of your time. But learn to say no to some of the other things um, that could potentially be getting in the way of your dreams. Um, and then be ready. That opportunity is going to come. You need to, to be ready to drop whatever it is to be able to deliver and, uh, and get what you want. And that's it. Thank you so much.